In June 2006, I was then the military reporter for the Jerusalem Post, and I was invited by the Israeli Navy to join an Israeli Navy ship that was for the first time participating in drills, maritime exercise with NATO forces, but it was in the Black Sea off the coast of Romania. And the ship was sailing for about a week or two to get to Romania, so I decided to fly into Bucharest on a Friday and take a train down to the port city of Constanta. And then I was gonna join the ship, which was gonna set sail from the harbor on Sunday morning. So my plan was to stay in the hotel near the port, eat the Shabbat meals on the ship with the Israeli sailors, and then join them Sunday out at sea. So I get in Friday to Constanta and I have a day what to do. So I look online and I see that there used to be a Jewish community there before the World War II, before the Holocaust. And there used to be a beautiful synagogue. So I start looking for the shul, for the synagogue. I get to the address of what it was written online, couldn't find it. So I start asking people, where's the synagogue, synagoga, synagogi, whatever you say. And then someone pointed me down a street. I find this dilapidated building completely run down, the roof completely fallen through. I walk in through this iron gate into inside what was once this magnificent, massive synagogue. You could see the women's section up above. You could see where the Aron Kodesh, where the Torah scrolls used to be held in the front. You could see where the bima was in the middle. But there's nothing there now. Rubble, mattresses, syringes. I, I don't know what it was, but a real, real dump. And I see in the corner, though, a tile, two tiles, that I guess had run around the interior of this synagogue, right, along the wall, with a Magen David, a Star of David, and a nice little decoration, but broken in half, right in the middle of the Star of David. And I'm standing there thinking to myself, do I take this tile or do I not take this tile? And as I'm thinking, two men walk in, and they say to me, what are you doing here? And I said, I'm just a tourist. And they said, you can't be here, this is where we live, you have to leave. I got a little scared because they looked a little suspicious, so I left the shul, that was that. Later that night, Friday night, I'm sitting on the ship, eating Shabbat dinner with the Israeli sailors. And I tell them the story, and they say to me, you have to take us there. And I said, it's Friday night, I don't know how to get there. They said, take us there, let's see if we can get there. So we go, and we go, I go with the sailors, we go with a group also of security officers who came with the ship from Israel's naval seals. Right, Israel's version of the Navy SEALs, known as Shayet Shloshesrei, the 13th Flotilla. These are the real tough commandos of Israel. I managed somehow to find the synagogue, but when we get there this time, the gate on the outside is now locked. So I said to them, sorry guys, you can't get in. They look at me and they say, do you know who we are? <laughs> you think we can't climb over this thing? They jump over the fence within a second. They walk into the courtyard and I say to them, when you go inside the shul, on the left is that tile, bring it out for me. They bring out the tile, we bring it back to the ship, I bring it back to Israel, and now it's in my house in Jerusalem on the wall, uh, and it's what many Jews have in their homes, what's known as the Zecher Lachorban. It's a, a reminder of the destruction of Jerusalem, the destruction of the Jewish people. That's what we have on our wall, still that Star of David broken in half. But I tell this story because that Sunday morning, when we set sail from the harbor, of Constanta was the morning on June of 2006 when Gilad Shalit, the Israeli soldier, was abducted from the Gaza Strip. I spent a couple days on the ship. I flew back to Israel, went straight down to Gaza as the reporter covered that emerging conflict. And then two weeks later, two reservists were abducted along the border with Lebanon. And they were kidnapped by Hezbollah, and that sparked what became known as the Second Lebanon War, a war that lasted 34 days between Israel and Hezbollah. And I felt that in, this, in these two, three months, from June through August, I experienced essentially the history of the Jewish people, right? I'm in Romania, in a shoal that you must have been once glamorous, magnificent, beautiful, before the Holocaust destroyed it. We, the sailors, right, managed to save this little piece from this shoal, which I don't even know if it exists anymore. I brought it back to Jerusalem. And then we went into I spent time on, a, on a, the Navy warship, the modern strength of the state of Israel, and then came back and saw the threats that we currently face from Hamas and Gaza, from Hezbollah and Lebanon. It, 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 it stays with me, that story, because I feel like this is essentially, in just three months, from my little vantage point, the history of our people.